This is the second video in a, in a two, two uh, video playlist that talks about how to export from Salesforce, make changes uh, to a spreadsheet. That was the first video. And now once you have a CSV file of that spreadsheet, how to bring it, we're going to talk about how to use Data Loader uh, to bring it in. Another way you reach Data Loader is it's just a, a URL. You enter this uh, and you get this screen. Uh, plenty of good help information. You'll see it all along the way by clicking kind of log in with Salesforce. What it does is to, to bring up a, an authorization screen. You can decide whether or not you want to be in sandbox or production. If you're going into production, um, just uh, again, be very careful because this is a, a very powerful tool and will make uh, major changes. So test it. You'll see how I'm doing that within this video uh, by clicking log in. What you're able to do is to, uh, again, more information if you need to. Uh, what I want to do is to do a new task. I'm going to be importing. Uh, and what that does is to bring up this screen, which says, OK, you want to do, uh, um, you want to identify what it is that you're going to be doing. You want to identify the file you're going to be importing. You want to map the fields and then run it. So you have three options, really. You have insert, which is new records. You have update which is what we're going to be doing because we have existing contacts that we're updating, or upsert, which is a merge of the two. We're going to be working with the contact object. So what I do is I, I start typing, and I get it here, and I say OK, and I want to go next. Um, and what it then says is, OK, now we're into step two, which is load your file, uh, upload a video, and we want to navigate to it. And I'm going to, going to upload it here. And then the next step, once it's uploaded, is you're going to see uh, this kind of all of the information for the mapping that's out there. Um, now, if we look at what the mapped fields are that are already mapped, this is what they've identified for us. Um, and you're seeing we've got the required service and urgency that we were looking for. Uh, these are the changes that we're importing. Also, facts, and this is, I was just using this as a, this is the date, uh, 2018 0212, just a way to track the changes and to know if I need to back this out. Uh, I want to be able to pull those records so I can make changes to them again. Uh, I've got the contact. I don't really need last name because I'm using contact ID as my key. So I'm just going to remove this uh, and delete it from my field mapping. Uh, I can also then look at the unmapped fields to see what information I'm not bringing across. And what you're seeing is the, the legacy information that I changed uh, is still there, but it's just a way of, uh, and you don't actually have to include that on your CSV, but uh, it just shows you how that works. Uh, but the key is, is what's the mapped information that you're bringing across? And what's the unmapped information that you wish you were bringing across? Um, uh, the next step then is to... Uh, is to move forward with next because we're now ready to run. It's going to bring up this summary screen, which is going to tell you I'm bringing in one row. This again was the CSV, which is a test just to make sure that it's all working and I can make the updates I need to. It allows you to have an email sent to you if you if you need that. Uh, plenty of other information. The documentation we'll we'll talk about. Um, if you're ready to save and run it, um, you click save and run. It says, do you really want to do this? And you click run when you're ready. Um, then what happens is you, you're provided with this kind of in-process screen. And it'll take about a minute or so for it to actually run. What you want to be able to look for is whether or not there are successes. Uh, these icons let you change the input, uh, ma modify the mapping, uh, then run it again, schedule it, delete it, or clone it. Uh, you know, good, good, helpful information. Again, all documented in the system. And then, uh, kind of, once you've done that and you've got successes, what you can do is to go back to your source report, make sure that in fact it occurred the way you expected to, and know that you've been successful. Now you can look at at running it with a couple of more records and make sure that uh, I would say three or four records. If you like what you're seeing. Uh, then you can run it with uh, with your full data set. But again, be very careful. Um, and best of luck.